Hey there, Dave here. Before getting into the episode, I have some cool people that I would like to say thank you to. People like the Top 3 Podcast Crew, Chris Nelson, Zol Geek, Colby Moyer, Eric Guess, Rick Firestone, and Jill. These lovely people have all gone to patreon.com slash realdavejackson and supported the tube and the podcasts within. You can be just like them by heading to patreon.com slash realdavejackson. As little as $2 per month will get you some treats like voting rights on what comes up on episodes of a top three podcast and tales from the backlog, bonus episodes and bonus content, and much more. Once again, that's patreon.com slash real Dave Jackson. Check it out. That'd be very cool of you, and you would be my hero. All right, on to the show. What's up, everybody? Dave here, going solo for this episode, and I'm here to give you my top games that released in 2022. It's the 2022 year in review. Uh, as customary, um, not only on this podcast, but I feel like every gaming podcast does something like this. So, I'm here to give you my favorite games from the year 2022, and just a little quick note, I did another episode that is my favorite games that did not come out in 2022, but that I played for the first time in the year of our Lord 2022. That episode is available exclusively for patrons of The Tube, Tales from the Backlog, and a Top 3 podcast. You can head to patreon.com slash Jackson. Uh, There'll be a link in the show notes, and $2 per month gets you those bonus episodes. So if you're interested in that, consider supporting that way. If you are just going to support by listening to the episode, that's cool. I love you too. So in this episode, I'm going to be going through my favorite games that I played from 2022, but I also have lots of submissions from people that are in the Tales from the Backlog, the Tube Discord server. Too. I asked the Discord server members to share their favorite games, their top three that they played in 2022, and we got quite a few submissions. So I, uh, I will be reading off the lists and the submissions that I got. I uh, really appreciate everyone who took the time to write down their list and share it. And uh, it's, it's a little microcosm of the Discord server, which I think is a really cool place uh, to hang out talk about video games and lots of other stuff. So if that's interesting to you, you can check down in the show notes again. There is an invite link to the Discord server. We would love to have you in our community. And the way this episode is structured is I have written down some honorable mentions here, and I'm going to go through those in alphabetical order. And then I'm going to go through my top five in order. Five, two, one, five, four, three, two, and then of course, one, the game of the year 2022. So without any further delay, let's kind of get into my favorite games that came out in 2022. And the first one is Cursed to Golf. So got to start out this list not only because it's the first in the alphabetical order but also want to shout out on one of my favorite indie games from this year which is Curse to golf uh, which is done by chuhai labs and the uh, main reason i was really following this is like i think it got some nintendo indie direct uh trailers or at least one but uh a podcast that i used to listen to a lot and really, really enjoyed called Final Games uh, was done by Liam Edwards, and he's the director on this game. So when I first heard that, I was like, oh, sick. I'll support Liam. I'll try this game out. And it turned out to be really, really fun uh, and well-deserving of a spot on this end-of-the-year best games list. So what it is is it's a roguelike golf platformer, and you're using golfing mechanics but this is a platformer. So you're trying to hit the ball to specific places to platform around and get to the end of each level. Um, Kind of think like Yoku's Island Express, how it uses pinball as platforming and Metroidvania stuff, but this is using golf. And it's really, really fun golf video games rule. Like almost all of them are great, great fun. And I think the idea to use golf as platforming is really, really uh, cool. They executed it well. And what you um, also have are you have cards that give you 
kind of like bonus moves or special abilities like, you know, mulligans because it's a golf game, but also like rocket boosts, uh, ways to deaden the ball so it doesn't bounce when it hits the ground. So you can be very, very precise with where you want the ball to end up. Um, this game is really, really hard. I felt like I had to really learn all of these bonus moves, really master putting spin on the ball, and um, use everything I knew about the game, and make good shots, hit them with precision, hit them uh, with the right angles, etc. But when I did finally complete that perfect run, it felt really great. I had a great time with the game. So I'm going to share the first submission from the Discord server, and this one is from Chris, who's a patron and host of One Hour, One Decision podcast. Uh, you heard Chris last week on the episode about the Forgotten City. And Chris did not give a complete list, but Chris's game of the year from 2022 is Marvel Snap, which I played a little bit of. I know lots of people are super into that game. Um, from what little I played, I, I can tell it's a really well-made game and not just a Marvel cash grab. So good shout there, Chris. The next game on my list of honorable mentions, again, going in alphabetical order, is God of War Ragnarok. So God of War Ragnarok is going to be covered on an upcoming episode of Tales from the Backlog. I'm going to be recording that one in a couple of weeks with a very special guest. I just finished the game yesterday, so it's going to be the last game that I finish that makes it onto these lists. Um, I think God of War Ragnarok is a, a very well put together game. It's super polished. The combat is a lot of fun. The voice acting is incredible. The game looks incredible. There's a lot to like about God of War Ragnarok. Uh, there are also a couple of things that like were kind of disappointing to me that keep it out of the top five uh, for 2022 for me. So this is a direct continuation of God of War 2018 in almost every way. And that's a good thing sometimes. Sometimes though that is a, um, it detracts from the game and uh, I will get into this in depth in the episode, but if you like God of War 2018, you're going to like God of War Ragnarok. And if you played 2018 and were like, you know, I don't, I don't really like this. I don't like the combat or I don't like the characters, then this is not going to bring you back. It's uh, pretty much the same. A um, couple of odd things that I noticed while playing. Uh, there is a distinct MCU influence in this game that I think does not mesh with the tone that God of War 2018 set up. Uh, the characters from God of War 2018 and a couple of the new characters really fit. And then the rest of them are all like Thor Ragnarok style comic relief type characters, quippy, snarky, sarcastic, almost all of them. And I, I just don't, I don't think it fits and it detracted from a lot of like the middle portion of this game. Uh, so it, it's a complaint that I had, it's keeping it off, out of my top five, but all that being said, it is a really well put together game. It's a lot of fun to play. And then um, there were some sequences in this game, some character moments that were either like really bombastic and cool in that way that we want God of War to be, uh, but also plenty that were quiet and really, really great character moments. So there's a lot to like here. It's still worthy of being included. So that's God of War Ragnarok. And on that note, I have a submission from Will from Friday Night Gamecast. Appreciate you writing in. Will, Will's top three games from 2022 were number three, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Shredder's Revenge, number two, Stray, and number one, God of War, Ragnarok. The next game on the list is The Quarry.
So The Quarry was episode 49 of Tales from the Backlog, featuring Liv from Between Two Gamers. What's up, Liv? And The Quarry was kind of a game that if you asked me like a year ago, would you be excited for this? My answer would have been no. But in the meantime, um, I played Until Dawn, early 2022. I played that for the first time. Uh, Thank you, Jared from Play Along for pushing me to play that. So I played that, had a good time with it, even though I traditionally don't enjoy horror games with jump scares, etc. So as soon as I then saw that they're making another game set at a summer camp in that same Until type of vein, I knew that I would play that. So the quarry is really similar to Until Dawn. You try and keep your characters alive to see the sunrise overnight while all hell breaks loose around them. And I think that the summer camp setting is really fun. It's it's to me more relatable than the setting in Until Dawn, which is a you know a, a mountain, a secluded a secluded mountain lodge and some mines and stuff. I've never been inside a mine, but I did go to summer camp when I was a kid, so I enjoyed the setting a lot. And the quarry improves in some areas, kind of like having more likable characters um, and a more kind of human story than in Until Dawn. I did think that having more likable characters is a bit of a trade-off because part of the fun of Until Dawn was when your characters die in all of these gruesome ways, I didn't really, like, I didn't get sad because they were all pieces of shit. I didn't, like, I didn't want them to succeed in life. The characters in the quarry are a lot more likable, so when they did die, I felt a lot more guilt about making the wrong decision. But it was a really fun experience, it was a really fun mystery to uh, uncover. And it was a lot of fun to talk about on the podcast with Liv and talk about how our playthroughs uh, kind of went in different directions because this is a game where that can happen. So that's the quarry. I have another submission from the Discord server, and this one is from patron of the show, Adam B. Adam's top three from 2022 are Shadows Over Loathing, which I can't wait to play. Number two, Elden Ring, and number one, Signalis, which has been getting a bunch of buzz, and I'm pretty excited to play that sometime too. So thank you, Adam. Next up, on the honorable mentions list for 2022, Pokemon Legends Arceus. So if you're listening to this and you're like, Dave, Pokemon Legends Arceus came out a couple years ago. What are you talking about? No, it didn't. It came out in January 22. It just feels like that shit was a couple years ago. So I did an episode of it with uh, Jared from Play Along Podcast. So thank you, Jared. That was episode 29. And this one has kind of faded in my memory as like the first experience has uh, obviously faded into the past. Uh, But I will always love this game. It has lots of flaws. This this is not a perfect game, but I will always love this game for bringing the childhood magic back to Pokemon. And when I was playing this, there was a distinct feeling of joy that I had playing it that I had not gotten from Pokemon, even though I enjoyed Pokemon Sword and Shield. I had not gotten that feeling of joy from a Pokemon game since the first couple weeks of Pokemon Go when everyone was playing that game together, which is like, I think the closest we'll ever get to world peace was that couple weeks, first couple weeks of Pokemon Go. But I really, really loved Arceus, the feeling of just exploring a world, seeing all these Pokemon, uh, using different tactics to catch them, um, running away from really dangerous Pokemon. Like they, they finally attempted to really make you feel like Pokemon that are too strong for your party are dangerous wild animals and they captured that that kind of plays into the story a little bit too Um, but I really enjoyed this game and it just goes to show that Pokemon does not have to be reliant on the tried and true formula to deliver a gameplay experience that's really fun and uh, while also not like making it you know something totally different like Pokemon Snap or Pokemon Pinball or something like that. Like those games are fun, 
but they're very obviously like spin-offs. This feels like a different direction for the main Pokemon series. And I hope that this series continues. I would love to play Pokemon Legends uh, Ho-Oh when we go to Johto in the past or something like that. That would be great. But that is Pokemon Legends Arceus. The next game on the list, and this is a brief one, but I have to mention it. It's Returnal Ascension. So Returnal was episode 27 uh, of the podcast featuring Ryan Delaney, and Returnal was close, if not my game of the year for 2021. I absolutely loved that game. And in 2022, a DLC pack dropped for it. And so this is the least substantial of any of the entries on this list today, but uh, this is a Endless Tower DLC climbing up this tower and just seeing how far you can get and that on its own would not really be enough to make it on the list but this game also includes some story elements that kind of wrap up the story of Returnal and if you listen to that episode of the show I really enjoyed thinking about digging into the story and trying to figure out just what the fuck's going on in that game so a little bit of clarity on the story from Returnal Ascension while also giving me an excuse to play Returnal again. Uh, It introduced some new weapons. It introduced a new kind of like super gun item that you can use to make boss fights um, a bit more manageable. Uh, It also added co-op. I I didn't play co-op, but I know like this game's really hard. So playing it co-op would be pretty helpful for sure. Uh, So real quick uh, kind of thing on Returnal Ascension, but giving me an excuse to jump in and get some more new Returnal content? Hell yeah, gotta include it on this list. We have another submission from the Discord server, and this is from patron of the show, Chris N. Chris's number three is Soldiers, S-O-U-L-D-I-E-R-S, Soldiers. Number two, Marvel Snap, and number one, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Shredder's Revenge. I'm jealous of everybody who has Turtles nostalgia and beat 'em ups nostalgia because it seems like that game really just knocked it out of the park for those people. Next up, as we go down the list of honorable mentions, I think we only have two more. The next honorable mention is Stray. So when you're talking about the games that kind of defined the gaming world, the zeitgeist of 2022, the first one I'm going to think of from 2022 is one that's in my top five. But the next one, there I can't think of a game that dominated the conversation like Stray did. And for partly that reason, but also the fact that I think it's a really good game that achieves most of what it sets out to do, Stray deserves to be mentioned in these year-end wrap-ups. Um, it was a nice little palette cleanse, you know, you play a lot of video games, sometimes you need a short game with some interesting gameplay or a nice little story or something like that to break things up. This game, I think, does a little bit more than that. Uh, so it's marketed as, you know, cat game. You get to play as a cat, right? And that that reputation, um, I think, undersells what it's actually like to play Stray. So you do get to play as a cat. You get to jump around and control a cat and interact with the environment in all the nasty ways that cats do, you know, scratching stuff, knocking stuff off of tables, um, taking a nap in situations where you shouldn't be taking a nap, Uh, walking through people's legs and making them fall down. Cat stuff, you know? And I think that, like, I thought that this would just be like a gimmicky, you know, 
QTE based or like almost walking sim based, you know, walking through the game as a cat and you'd be like, oh yes, you know, cute, cute cat. Oh, he jumped up on this. Look at, look at him go. But there's more to it. And I got the distinct feeling playing this game that every time they were kind of storyboarding or something like that, and they came up with a new situation, the first question that they asked is, what would a cat do here? How would it, how would a cat react? How would people react to the cat? Those questions. And I think that was really, really well realized in all the situations in the game. Um, add on to that the fact that this is one of the most beautiful visual games that I played in all of 2022. The sound design is really great. Uh, great atmosphere, visual design. Uh, there's like made up languages and all kinds of signs and lights and everything. Just really beautiful, uh, as well as some really weird, uh, almost horror type levels in the game. If you've played, you know what I'm talking about. Um, the story is a little bit of a letdown. Uh, the story, I think, writes some checks that it doesn't end up cashing. Um, and I think if this game had a better story and a better payoff to the story that it was trying to tell, it it could have vaulted up into the top five. But as it is, uh, I was very, very happy with this game. Um, and I think it's well deserving of being included on game of the year lists, but also deserving of its spot in the zeitgeist from 2022. So Stray, uh, should mention also that Stray was not a main episode of Tales from the Backlog, but I did do a solo Tales from the Backlog episode on Patreon. And again, if you would like to, uh, hear that, that's available for that $2 per month, um, or more. So Stray. And on the topic of Stray, we have a couple of submissions from people in the Discord server. The first one is Ben from Play Along Podcast. What's up, Ben? Ben's number three is Trek to Yomi, which is one I didn't get to play at the time because I didn't have Game Pass, but I do have Game Pass now, so might give that a shot. Ben's number two is Stray, and number one is Sunday Gold. And I don't know what that is. I should look it up. Ben has good taste in games, so if that's his number one, I should check it out. And we also have a top three from Scott. Scott's number three is Aperture Desk Job, number two is Stray, and number one, Immortality, which is one that's on my list. I have it installed. I can play it for free on my phone. I just haven't gotten to it yet. I will, though. All right, the final honorable mention for 2022 is... Xenoblade Chronicles 3. So the final honorable mention goes to a game that in some ways is the best game I played all year and in some ways is one of the worst that I played all year. And so it kind of evens out to be an honorable mention type of game for me. Uh, this will be upcoming a full episode of the show, episode 57 with Colby from Switch It Up. We had a really good conversation about this game. Um, so just a little quick kind of blurb about Xenoblade 3 and why it's on my honorable mention. Um, there are a lot of bizarre and underbaked and questionable design choices, especially when it comes to gameplay and combat for this game. Um, and it being 60 plus hours long, it's a lot of time to sit and think about those things. Um, but the reason it makes this list is that uh, of the games on my 2022 Game of the Year list, this one has the best story by far. Like, this story affected me emotionally in a way that most of the other games could not even dream of. There's only one in the top five that has a story that even approaches what uh, the Xenoblade Chronicles 3 story was. And world building and story setup and all of those things. Just great. And in a series that's already known for world building and stories and groups of characters, this one is the best one in that. So it's deserving of being on this list, even though I kind of think that the gameplay is trash. Uh, it's The story is that good. 
So if you're listening to this and you haven't played it, if you have a passing interest in Xenoblade, um, I would say that this is a really good uh, game to check out. And especially if you, you know, if this is your first Xenoblade game and you haven't spent uh, 250 hours with the combat system like I have even before this game started, you might have a better time with it than I did. So Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is kind of like a, a capstone for the existing trilogy and a step forward for the series. And it's definitely worthy of being on this list. It's also worthy of being in discussion for Nintendo's best exclusive of 2022. So Xenoblade Chronicles 3. I have a submission from the Discord server along that note. This one comes from Eric, patron of the show from the Unlockables podcast. What's up, Eric? Number three for Eric is Vampire Survivors. Number two is Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. And number one, Xenoblade Chronicles 3. And I know that a uh, guest on the upcoming episode, Colby, would probably put this as his number one as well. So there we go, Xenoblade. Getting into the top five now, and these are the most fun, my favorite slash best games that I played in 2022 that released in that year. And the first one um, is a bit of a surprise, was a bit of a surprise. I kind of bought this on an impulse and really enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would. And that is Neon White. So Neon White is pure video game fun. When you think of like the fun and rush that a kind of free-flowing arcadey type of game can give you, that is Neon White. And at its first glance, you may look at it and think, oh, 3D platform first-person shooter. And you do have guns, you do shoot things, but this is not really a first-person shooter. What it actually is, is a first-person platforming puzzle speedrunning game where you have guns, sometimes you need to shoot stuff, but more often you need to use them for their platforming abilities than their bullets. Um, and very few games this year reached this point of me playing and just not able to stop playing because I'm having so much fun with it. I finish a run, maybe I'm one second away from getting that platinum medal on there. And I know that I can shave a couple seconds off of my time. Um, this, the balancing or the choices for what times you need to get to get those medals, I think are extremely well realized, well thought out. You do have to play really well to get those medals, but it is possible. This is, it's not like something where only sickos can get those fast levels. So I actually did go through and get all of the top medals for all of the levels. I had that much fun with it. And the other thing that kept me playing is maybe I did get that platinum medal, but this game has leaderboards with your friends and maybe I would get that platinum medal, but then I would see, oh, my friend beat my time by half a second. Let me try it again and see if I can beat them. And couple this with like super smooth gameplay, super responsive controls, um, and this like incredible flow state when you're going through the levels, like pure concentration. Loved it so much. From a gameplay perspective, this game is one of the best I played all year. From a story perspective, yikes, big yikes. Um, the reason that I didn't penalize this game as much for the story is they put in a like basically skip all dialogue fast forward. So if you're not into the story and I was not, that's only a couple seconds before you can get back in that sweet, sweet flow state. So that is Neon White, number five. We have a submission from the Discord server here from patron of the show Moonborn. Moonborn's top three from 2022. Number three, Bloodborne PSX, which if you remember, that also feels like it came out five years ago, but it was the uh, PlayStation 1 demake of Bloodborne. A really, really awesome project. Lo I love that too. Number two, Automaton Lung, which I have not heard of, but 
Sounds cool. Number one, Kirby and the Forgotten Land, something that I should have played. I have it on hold at the library, so we'll see when I get it. <laughs> Number four, on the best games from 2022, my favorite games from 2022, is Citizen Sleeper. So Citizen Sleeper was episode 50 of Tales from the Backlog with Deadbeat Punk from What the Fuck Do You Want podcast. And as soon as I heard that Gareth Damian Martin, who is the creator of this game and made a game I liked from a couple years ago called In Other Waters, as soon as I heard there was another game from Gareth Damian Martin, I was like, okay, I'm going to play that because I know it's going to have good writing. And... Citizen Sleeper, I think, surpassed that. Citizen Sleeper also made a uh, more of an effort to build a cast of characters and a setting that feels like home. In Other Waters was a very solitary game. Um, you had someone to talk to, but not very reliably, I'll say. Um, but Citizen Sleeper really, really built out a world on this space station that your character is inhabiting. Built out a cast of characters that are... Uh, all ranges of super helpful, very trustworthy to incredibly unsavory. But the thing that Citizen Sleeper does is your character is in such a precarious situation that you have to trust all of the people. Whether you think they're a good person or not, you don't have a choice. You need their help. So it puts you in this situation. The setup for the game is really, really good. Uh, super interesting sci-fi kind of corporate dystopia cyberpunk setup where uh, your character is inhabiting your character's consciousness is being emulated in this uh, robot body and you are wor you're you're sent to work off your character's debt in this robot body uh, your character runs away though uh, while the real body is sleeping somewhere else the character's robot shell runs away and you have to try to survive and find a place to live, find medicine that can keep your robot body together because of the planned obsolescence uh, by the company that owns it. And you're forced to trust all of these people. You're forced to try to carve out a niche for yourself in this dangerous place. And the writing really, really just, it's, it's great. Chef kiss. Uh, I don't know that I played a game with better writing this year than Citizen Sleeper. This was the game earlier when I said the only other game that story-wise uh, competes with Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is Citizen Sleeper. It's that good. We have a submission from the Discord server. This one's from Matt from the Fun and Games podcast. Matt's number three is Citizen Sleeper. Number two is Live Alive, the kind of HD 2D remake of that game, which I, I still got to try. And number one for Matt is Tunic. Tunic, a game that I played, did not make my list. Uh, I did have some amount of fun with Tunic, <laughs> another upcoming episode of the show. Number three for 2022 is the last one uh, from this list that I did not do an episode about, and it is Hard Space Shipbreaker. So Hard Space Shipbreaker is part of a kind of a group of games that came out in 2022 that I would describe as like soothing and satisfying. There was Power Wash Simulator, there was Vampire Survivors, and there was Hard Space Shipbreaker. So in this game, if you haven't played it, you are assuming the role of a cutter and it's actually very similar to Citizen Sleeper's setup your character has a massive amount of debt in the corporate dystopian future. Um, so they, well, I won't say what happens. Um, they are inhabiting a robot shell and 
they are sent out to systematically disassemble spaceships for scrap. And so you play this in first person, in zero G, and you go out, you see a giant spaceship waiting for you. And I gotta say that taking it apart piece by piece from the time when it was a giant spaceship with complicated connections and complicated systems inside of it, taking it apart until there's nothing left but just bits of metallic detritus floating around. Some of the most satisfying video gaming I've done. What I did was throw on a podcast, take uh, stock of the situation, find the cut points, and get to it. Um, It's just a super relaxing game until you accidentally cut into the ship's nuclear reactor and everything goes boom. So that's my number three for 2022, Hard Space Shipbreaker. There's another submission in the Discord server here from Adelaide. Adelaide's number three is Get In The Car Loser, number two, Elden Ring, and number one, Live Alive Remake. Again, gotta play that. My number two game from the year of our Lord 2022 is Vampire Survivors. So Vampire Survivors was episode 38 of Tales from the Backlog with Chris Reddig. And we did that episode, I think when the game was at like 0.6 version, uh, well before it came out, uh, out of early access. And we said in the episode, I'm not sure how much this game could change. I think it's changed a little bit. Uh, I think the core gameplay is still very, very similar, but uh, things have just gotten ratcheted up a notch as far as ridiculousness goes. So I may want to revisit that, maybe for a patron episode or something. Uh, But the reason it's on this list is because if game of the year encompasses how fun a game is, how well made it is, and how much it occupies the kind of gaming space throughout the entire year, then Vampire Survivors is a clear clear worthy entry on a game of the year list it is a deceptively simple game in its first few minutes you're walking around just kind of auto attacking a couple of bats flying around on the screen soon the simplicity gives way to just madness chaos crystals everywhere weapons firing in all dimensions hundreds of enemies swarming at you on the screen and it gets to a point late in the game where you can't even see where your character is, but you don't need to because you have built up from the point where you're just a dude wandering around with a whip, built all the way up until your character is a, a god. You're a force of destruction and nothing can stand in your way until you get to 30 minutes and the game says, oh, ho, ho, you thought you were bad, huh? Well, we'll see. Vampire Survivors is like good feeling drug, the game. Every chest you open is a miniature party. Every EXP crystal is like doing a perfect high five with somebody. And you're able to build out your weapon set in a way that if you do well, the last couple minutes since everything auto fires, you can put your controller down and just kind of admire the force of nature that you created. Uh, So, Every other game on my list, except for one, that's my number one game, has a lot more going on mechanically. There's more story in all of the games, certainly more budget. This game was made for, I I believe uh, the the figure was 1100 pounds, a lot more budget in all the other games, but I enjoyed my time with Vampire Survivors more than all but one. Great game. And I can't wait to see where this game goes uh, because the developer has a commitment now now that the game's taken off uh, they were able to quit their job and focus on developing this full time i can't wait to see where it goes and what other ridiculous things get added into it so that's my number two vampire survivors my number one game of 2022 and 
If you're listening to this and you know anything about me at all, you're listening, you're like, I think I know what Dave's number one is, but I'll listen to the episode just in case. And then if you've gotten to this part, you know what's up. Number one for 2022 is Elden Ring. Elden Ring was episode 36 of Tales from the Backlog featuring Ryan from Listoff. And not only was it episode 36, I loved this game so much and I put so much time into it that I did three bonus episodes about Elden Ring. So I believe it was July 2022 was Elden Ring month. And we did the main episode of the show. There was an episode about open world games and what makes them work and what makes them Uh, suck (laughs) sometimes and the other episodes were a discussion about why Elden Ring was more approachable for new players than previous from software games and then the customary boss tier list episode so it came out long ago now that it, it feels like it came out a long time ago it came out in February and I think today's day and age works in in such a weird way that like things that came out 10 months ago feel like ancient history because every day now is a new viral story, a new social media outrage, a new video game release, all kinds of things that just feel like every day is a a whole thing, right? And so when game of the year season came around, I started to get the distinct impression that people were like kind of forgetting how big Elden Ring was. The entire months of February, March, April, May, even June, and then July on my show was all Elden Ring stuff uh, that was dominated by Elden Ring. The first half of the year in January was Elden Ring hype month. There were a couple games that came out that people liked, but at one point, like my entire PlayStation friends list was playing it. Like I looked at my friends list, eight people online, all of them playing Elden Ring. And I can't tell you the last time that happened with any game that came out. Um, but like, aside from the zeitgeist and cultural phenomenon factor, Elden Ring is just a really well-made video game. And it's the best game that I played this year. I think like, of all the games that I am critically thinking about from this year, there are some games on this game of the year list that are more my personal favorites than I think critically the best. I think Elden Ring is both. It is an incredible game. The idea of taking from software gameplay, Dark Souls gameplay that I love so much and expanding it into an open world because you you got to remember one of from software's best attributes in modern years has been designing somewhat linear levels that are so tailored to like an intended experience that the idea of that and blowing it up into an open world where people can kind of make their own experience is a a monumental task and that expectation of open world dark souls kind of set up an impossible bar to clear because you would have to maintain that kind of tailored quality of the previous games while also making an interesting open world because not all open worlds are interesting by default most of them are not they're just big But From Software cleared that bar, in my opinion. They came out with an open world that was truly a joy to explore. The tailored experiences in the legacy dungeons or the small little pockets of things you find around the open world were as good as anything in a previous game. There's some of the legacy dungeons in this game are like just top shelf levels. You you do not get better level design than some of the things in this game and add into that upgraded possibilities for your builds. You can do more, you have more options, you have more tools, uh, add into that an emphasis on making this game approachable for new players, using things like spirit ashes, taking away invasions for people that are playing online, adding in a horse to ride around, which you can use to get out of trouble in a lot of places. 
all of those things together, it created this perfect storm. And I think that not only is Elden Ring game of the year for 2022, but I think that when we look back in five years, in 10 years, as the truly seminal games begin to stand out, the way that we look back five, seven years ago, and we look back and we say The Witcher 3, Breath of the Wild, The Last of Us, games like that that truly stand the test of time and remain like these incredible games when recency bias has faded, I think that Elden Ring will be one of those games too. This is the best game I played this year, and it was not particularly close, in my opinion. So, that is my number one game for this year, Elden Ring. And I have many submissions from the Discord server that will back me up here. So first up is Aaron, my co-host from a Top 3 podcast. Aaron's number three game from 2022 is Stray. Number two is Dying Light 2. Number one, Elden Ring. Andrew from Your Friendly Neighborhood Gamers, many time guest on the show. Number three, A Plague Tale Requiem. Number two, God of War Ragnarok. Number one, Elden Ring. Hopple, who is a lovely patron of the show. Number three, Yakuza Kiwami 2. Number two, Yakuza 0. Hell yeah, Hopple. Hopple's been going through all those Yakuza games. Number one, Elden Ring. And last but not least, patron of the show, Jake. Number three, Stray. Number two, Sifu. And number one, Elden Ring. So that is the end of the Game of the Year 2022 list. Just to recap, uh, the honorable mentions were Cursed to Golf, The Quarry, God of War Ragnarok, Pokemon Legends Arceus, Returnal Ascension, Stray, Xenoblade Chronicles 3, and then the top five were number five, Neon White, number four, Citizen Sleeper, number three, Hard Space Shipbreaker, number two, Vampire Survivors, and number one, Elden Ring. So thank you everybody for listening. 2022 has been a wonderful year for video games. I truly mean this when I say it, but every year is the best year for video games. 2023 will hopefully be better than 2022. And if you're not hoping for that, then I don't know I don't know why. Why <laughs> I I really truly believe that video games get better every year and I can't wait to see what my 2023 episode is going to look like. So thank you everybody for listening. Thank you patrons of the show for your support. Thank you to everyone who's not a patron, but who has been listening, commenting, sharing, leaving ratings and reviews. All of those things are so, so helpful. And it would be a gross understatement for me to say that 2022 was not uh, an incredible year on the podcast. So thank you very much. Discord server members, patron members, listeners, friends. Can't wait to see what 2023 brings. See you later.